Another lovely motherfucking day. What's up, guys? Yo, Jigs Keeper here on this fucking fabulous, sexy piece of bike. The GS XR or the G Sex R. So I got to work, you know, about an hour or so ago, guys, and you know, said fuck it. You know. I said I was gonna start riding more and get back on this shit and today's a fucking great day to do that. I mean, you know, right? It's like fucking Cali weather right now. This bike's fucking roaring like a motherfucking lion. It's, just, it's a good fucking day. And, you know, I, I figured, you know, I'd come out here and think a little bit, you know? Just contemplate shit. Take a take a ride, you know. Don't really have a place to go. Don't really give a fuck. I got gas in my tank. And it's all about just enjoying this shit, enjoying this fucking bike. So I thought I'd come out here, you know. Especially because you know I took a shit earlier around lunchtime, you know. So I did my thinking on the toilet. Now I said, fuck it, I'm gonna do my thinking on this fucking sexy bitch of a bike. I'm gonna check this park out because I haven't checked this park out in a shit long time. And you used to be able to fucking, they used to have ducks and everything in here and shit. Oh my God, look at all these fucking turns. Be like Rossi in this bitch. Oh yeah. Oh shit, better watch out for that gravel. Just keep us going eat shit. Oh shit. I guess I'll turn here. <laughs> Thank you. Let's see. I'm gonna park over here. Probably gonna be a fucking drug deal going down here. This is why this is why I wanna be packing man. This is why I wanna carry a fucking gun with me. Cause you never know when shit like this, you know, shit can go bad out here. And I carry a knife with me. But the next step is to buy myself a Glock. And I don't know shit about guns, guys, so don't fucking judge me. <sighs> I just know that it's popular and whatever, but you could probably get something fucking half the price and shit that still does the job. Like a fucking used Smith & Wesson. <laughs> or some shit like that. I'm gonna hope my bike doesn't get stolen. If it does, well, fuck it. And I was wrong, guys. There actually is ducks over here. Let's see if I can get next to them without fucking getting bit. <laughs> Let's see what's up out here. Those fly. That's a pretty duck there. Not gonna hurt you. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. That goose was already coming up to me to kick my ass. Uh, I'm gonna keep my distance, goose. I feel like I gotta watch my back out here. You never know. Some fucking girl doing some weird shit out there. Some pretty little ducks there. That one's just chilling. Those are just like, motherfucker, who the fuck are you? Uh-oh. Every time they bow their head, man, that's when I start getting scared because that's when you know they're going to pull some shit. But yeah, it's the duck part, guys. It's beautiful. Sometimes you just want to sit out here, sit on the chair, enjoy it. Just one of those days, man, you know. Might sound kind of corny, but, you know, these are the, the kind of times that, you know, you just, you just gotta enjoy, man. You gotta, oh, that duck looks old. I feel bad for it. It's kind of limping. I wanna take it home with me. Take care of it. You can tell that one's old. This guy's just chilling. He's not even scared. But yeah, guys, like I was saying, this is just one of those times you just take it in and enjoy life. 
enjoy the value of life, you know? Be thankful you're alive and kicking ass, fucking bitches taking names. <laughs> that one looks funny. Well, see you later, guys. Next time I'll bring some bread with me. <laughs> a lot of kids that come over here, I wouldn't mind coming over here. I think there's a duck park in McAllen, actually. She probably asked my girlfriend if she wants to go, because I know she's always wanting to go on outings with the kids. <laughs> this past, past weekend, we just went with her kids to the zoo that we have here. So, that was interesting. <laughs> uh, but, I don't know. I think it'd be fun if we all went to the duck park and fed some ducks. I'd enjoy it. <clears throat> but yeah, guys, like I was saying, I, I painted my GoPro housing. I spray painted it matte black. Because, you know, I've always, I wanted a fucking black housing, but I was like, fuck that shit. I am not going to pay. I mean, it's ridiculous. GoPro wants to charge 40 some bucks, almost 50 bucks for a piece of fucking plastic housing that's black. What kind of shit is that? For my fucking RGV people right there, baby. Sonics. <laughs> El pinche Sonics way. Quiere ir a la pinche Sonics para comer. Me and my fucking shitty Spanish. I don't fucking know Spanish. I and mean, I think a lot of you guys know that by now. I've been telling my girlfriend here and there that I want her to teach me because, believe it or not, her fucking ass knows Spanish. I don't. And I live at fucking 30 minutes from the fucking border. So, isn't that fucking crazy? I had to, guys. I passed my old job here, the fucking douche network. Call center, fuck you, motherfucker. Oh, the times I spent here wasted quite a bit of my life here at this place. Yeah! Oh, yeah! Feel that power! Oh, power! Oh, feeling the power! <laughs> Sorry, guys, I got fucking excited! Oh, shit! Speaking of the douche network, I remember how I got into that shit. Uh, let's see, what? Uh, here's a little throwback story for you guys. A little throwback motherfucking story. How I got at the dish motherfucking network. Damn! How does that go? Uh, I want to say it was somewhere around the time I was 19, 20. Yeah, we'll call it 20. I was around 20. This was probably 2006. Long ass time ago. Obviously, you can see how fucking old I am. <laughs> anyway, so I had graduated high school, and uh, I was actually going to, to college here to be a registered nurse. I was going to be like fucking Gaylord Fokker and shit, man. I was going to be a fucking nurse. Because that's what my parents wanted me to do. They wanted me to be a motherfucking nurse. You know, I got those parents that... You know, maybe other kids would fucking hate, but I got the parents that constantly nagged my ass. You gotta do something with your life. You gotta get an education. Are you going to school? Go to school. School, school, school. You better be at fucking school now. <laughs> oh, man. So, what can I say? I was there. I was kind of doing what they wanted. Uh... And, you know, I wasn't really feeling it because even when I got, even when I was in high school, I never had ambitions. Like, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't, I had no fucking clue. I was a lost kid in the world. Then I met some fucking white bitch. <laughs> That's what I'll call her. I'll call her the white bitch. Or as my, uh, my old friend liked to call her fucking, the fucking tuna girl. <laughs> And that's another story too. Like this fucking video if you want me to tell you that story. But anyway, so I met this girl. And like all people do, you know, stupid things for love in their life. Well, I wanted to spend more time with her, right? So, bam. Uh, bitch moved in with me and I spent more time with her. And uh, I was a loser for a while because I dropped out of college and um, wanted to do music. and. I kind of did that. I worked on a band and dropped out and 
spent more time with this girl. And despite what a million and one people were telling me within the first month of this relationship, um, you know, I fucking stayed with this girl, you know, even though she had a very, very slutty reputation. And, uh, well, anyway, you know, I think time came after a while where I was like, I just cannot stay at this fucking house all the time dealing with this bitch and <laughs> fucking not doing anything with my life because I just have it in me. It's, it's genetic that I always got to be doing something. If there's nothing to do on the weekend, I'll find something to do. I'll break some shit just to fix it. I, I always need something to do. I like challenges. I like learning shit constantly. That's what I do. And anyway, so I went and applied at a fucking call center. And lo and behold, I got the job. It was badass. I was making money. Yeah. And, you know, this girl wasn't doing anything. She was at home all day while I was working, right? So I pushed her to get a fucking job. And, you know, let me just say, background on this girl, she was a crazy ass bitch. Like I said, that's another story. But I told her, hey, you know what? Why don't you, um, why don't you come apply here too? We can both work here. We can both make a shit ton of money. Well, long story short, she applied there. She got the job. And, uh, well, she cheated on me with uh, some other fucking dude. Which, <laughs> go figure, this place is so small. When I had my yellow GSXR, I took it to him to get fixed. <laughs> uh, what a story. But she became a co core left off with this Mexican dude that was a drug dealer, and that was that. But that's how I fucking ended up getting there. Um, man, that wasn't much of a story, was it? <laughs> but that's how I ended up at Dish. I stayed there a while longer, um, and it was cool. Anyway, guys, this vlog is probably getting kind of long. I talked a lot today. Probably going to chop it the fuck up. Uh, but I don't know. I, there, like I said, I came out here to clear my mind. Lots on my mind. What's up, baby? And yeah, that's, that's it, man. I guess the moral of today's story, guys, is don't take life for granted. You know, get out there. Um, don't wait forever. Don't listen. Don't listen to people. You know, be you. Figure out who you are. I I told a friend that once because they're still searching for themselves. We're all here on this earth searching for ourselves. No one's gonna know exactly who they are. Uh, I mean, if you're lucky, you will. And there is there are some people out there that do, but some people will go throughout their whole lives trying to figure out who they are. It's, it's a learning process, guys. And nothing wrong with that. Find yourself a, a good partner. A good partner that supports you. Um, you know, you don't need to have a fucking Playboy model or any of that shit. You know, just find someone that's loyal, someone that's genuine. You'll fucking know. Do your research. Get your hoe facts. Um, trust me, if a girl's bad news, it, it's right there in front of your face. Don't fucking deny it. Don't fucking look past it. Unless you know and you just want to hit it, then shit, go for it. That being said, guys, this is your Jix Keeper. Hope you enjoyed today's vlog. A lot of ranting, a lot of bullshit, but hey, you know what? It was real, guys. It was fucking personal. And I love you guys. Uh, going up in subscribers, thank you for that. If you guys haven't already, check out my Facebook. Links and uh, stuff are in the fucking description below. Uh, have my Instagram, which I need to get on. Oh, shit, I'm almost out of gas. Gotta go do that. And yeah, guys, uh, as always, thank you for watching. Your support is greatly appreciated. Of course, if you want to go the extra mile and support me even more, uh, go ahead and private message me uh, to buy a decal, four bucks, Tales from the Jigs, guys. Support the channel, support me, and have some badass fucking uh, graphic on your bike or car, whatever. Anyway, guys, with that being said, I'll catch you guys on the next Tales from the Jigs. Latest motherfuckers, keep it creepy.